You know, when we were very young, our parents taught us to ask for things and to do so politely. So here's kind of the way it went as we were young. You would say, or here, being said to you, say please, and then following that, say thank you. As we grew older, we continued to ask, especially from our parents, and then it became a battle. We'd go to mom, or should we go to dad? If we went to mom, she would say, go ask your dad, and if we went to dad, he would say, go ask your mom, right? <laughs> and during that time, I think we all even learned not to take no as the final answer, but to ask again and try to figure out how we could actually achieve what it was we desired. Brethren, now, as Christians, we need to learn to ask in ways probably we haven't really considered before, but asking is a big part of our Christianity. Asking God about things in our lives is paramount in how we live. And even of more concern is the fact that what we ask for will dramatically affect our futures. Jesus taught about asking. I'd like to go to Luke 19 verses 9 through 13 to begin with in the Bible. Luke 11 verses 9 through 13 and I'll begin reading in verse 9. Here is what Jesus said and here's where I get the title for this sermonette. It's A-S-K. And there's a reason for that as you will see in this verse. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. A-S-K. -A ask, seek, knock. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open. If a son asks for bread from his any father among you, will he give him a stone? Will the dad react in that way? A rhetorical question. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? <laughs> Doesn't sound like a very good idea to the young ones here in the audience if dad gives you a, a serpent instead of a good piece of salmon or something. <laughs> Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, unconverted, carnal people, and I'm adding a few things there, but if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I'd like you to keep verse 13 in mind. I'll come back to that in just a little bit, but let's go back to just in an overview, look at verses 5 through 8 in this same chapter. Christ gives the analogy of a friend coming late at night and asking for loaves of bread for his guests who have come in. For, and he's asking from a neighbor, and he persists in this asking until the neighbor actually gives him what he needs, even though it's an inconvenience. But nonetheless, the neighbor responds. Now, a little bit more of an example of that is found in Luke 18. If you want to turn with me over there. I'll read verses 1 through 8. We get a dimension of asking according to how we are instructed in the Word of God to ask. <clears throat> Luke 18 verse 1, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Have you ever prayed for things and not immediately gotten the answer that you thought you wanted? I can raise my hand on that one for sure. But there's a lesson here. He said that men ought always to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was a certain city, in a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward. He said within himself, Though I do not fear God to regard man, yet because the widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. 
And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with him? The answer isn't forthcoming. It isn't immediate necessarily. But we are instructed here to continue to pray about issues, about problems, about things insurmountable in the human realm. That's why we have a God, a loving God that we can call Father. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, and nevertheless, and here's the challenge of the whole sermonette, when the Son of Man comes, Jesus Christ has promised to return, and if that promise is not fulfilled, you might as well take this Bible and throw it out the door, because it's a certainty in the Word of God. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith, the faith, on the earth what will be the condition of people on this earth look around what is the condition we find ourselves in right now not exactly the profile of Christianity is it <clears throat> John 14 verse 12 and I'll read through verse 14 John 14 and verse 12, I'm almost there, <laughs> giving these instructions to his disciples, Christ here says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Now, how does that come about? Is there an inference here that we should be praying about the work of God? about being effective servants in proclaiming the good news of the coming kingdom of God in mighty ways that maybe you don't even have precedents? Well, I say yes. I, I think those are things we can ask God to empower us, and we're already using those things. Here we are. We're having Sabbath services, and it can go around the world. Where did that come from? It's part of what Jesus Christ is prophesying here. And whatever you ask in, in verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And of course we understand there's some provisional things. He will not break God's law. But I'd like you to consider something else. We, Without turning there, John 1, 1 speaks of Jesus Christ as the Word in the beginning. We understand that to mean a spokesman or the spokesman. From the verses I just read, let's understand too that as we pray and as we ask that we're asking Jesus Christ to be our spokesman to the Father. Even though we don't pray to Jesus Christ directly, we pray to the Father in his name. It's as if he were asking. He gives us that open door, that permission to ask in his name and it's a sermon rather than a sermonette to explain how that comes with the responsibility and how that's to be fulfilled. But just briefly, remember Jesus Christ, when we pray, when we ask, is our spokesman to the Father. He is our high priest, our Savior, and all of those descriptive terms we could apply to him. You know, we're told to pray very specifically about a lot of things in the Bible, and, and you could derive your own list very easily by the things we're to pray for the king, for one another, for other people, for circumstances and situations. <clears throat> Prayer is an important part. Asking is an important part of the life of a Christian. Let's go to Luke 21 verse 36 and look at a scripture here I want to give you one example of something we should be asking for I mentioned earlier that what we ask for will dramatically affect our future are you shaping your future by those things which you ask God about and discuss with him even now Luke 21 verse 36 he says watch therefore Watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy 
to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. What happens if you're not asking, brethren, if you just take for granted and ignore what Jesus Christ is saying? That concept is magnified in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, without, again, going there for the sake of the time in this sermonette. You know it is the parable of the ten virgins. It gets down to the summation of the parable, and Christ talks about the fact that those who were ready, who did not let their oil completely disappear, kept their lanterns burning, and it's an analogy, of course, but it is an analogy of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are to ask for God to help us use his Holy Spirit to, it's not a matter of asking necessarily for more, we have been given the Spirit of God, but you know the scripture talks about those servants who are filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are to ask God to strengthen us as we go along, to be strong in the Spirit of God, bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit instead of that of the flesh. It is a big challenge, but if we read these parables Christ left for us in preparation for us to prepare, I should say, for the end of the age, we are supposed to be ready. We are supposed to be watching, preparing for the future. Ask God. Seek God. Knock on the door which only God himself can open and is willing to open. You know, God does not ignore his children any more than we ignore our children when they come to us and ask for an egg, a Pokemon card or whatever it might be. You know, we ask our parents, can we get some new Pokemon cards? I've seen, I'm getting a second childhood by, or parenthood by watching my grandsons go through that now. But again, let's take the lesson. God doesn't ignore his children when our petitions are brought before him. When we ask him in the name, by the authority of Jesus Christ, to fulfill our petitions, he is going to do it. Now, I'll leave with just a couple general statements. <clears throat> James 4, verses 2 and 3, talks about asking for the wrong things. Why do you have wars among you? Because when you, you, you don't ask. And when you ask, you ask amiss because you want to consume it on your lust, as it talks about there. Very selfish, greedy things. <clears throat> There are a couple of accounts in the Old Testament. The one is 1 Kings 3, verses 5 through 14. Again, without turning, but I want to give you the reference about Solomon when God appeared to him in Gibeon in a dream. And here's the opening statement from God. Ask, what shall I give you? And then the verses unfold as Solomon asked God for wisdom. He didn't ask for personal wealth or the death of an enemy or anything else and God said because you have asked for these things and not for what I just mentioned see I have given you wisdom and, and the ability to rule over the people of Israel and besides that I'm gonna pile on a little bit more I'm giving you what you didn't even ask for wealth fame so that there won't be a king like you that is ever in, in that exists during your days we have an approachable, loving, capable God with whom all things are possible. And you know, sometimes we ask for very narrow opportunities and helps. Brethren, bring whatever it is before God. Ask God. And if you don't get it the first time, kind of be like we were as kids. Keep asking. If you really want it, if you really desire it, ask for God's help. Do so, brethren, in the name of our spokesman, Jesus Christ.